So there is a lot to go through in this week's From the Verse. I'm going to cut straight to the intro without any shenanigans so we can get straight into it. Welcome back to From the Verse. I'm Brake and in these ones I talk about what's new and what is coming with Star Citizen. So let's get cracking, shall we? First off, let's discuss what's recently come out regarding 318 because this is this is the big one really now of course we know it's delayed uh and it won't be coming till next month at best but there appears to be a lot more content coming than, than we originally thought uh but what is that content break i hear you cry at your screen wishing i would just shut the f up and get straight to the point well how about you shut the f first up is the cargo refactoring update this ladies and gents is a huge one because it also comes with what we call soft deaths. So yes, cargo in 318 will be physicalized, if that's even a word. This means that you can now see, touch and tractor beam your cargo into your ship. But how does it work? Let's look at a few questions and answers for some answers. Uh, will cargo loading times be part of 318? At the moment, nothing changes when loading and unloading. This is handled automatically as it has been in the past. Once manual loading and unloading becomes a reality, you will have the option to choose between the two. If you choose to have the location do the loading and unloading, there will be a cost and a time when your ship is unavailable while the process completes, much like the current refinery gameplay. In the ISC cargo missions where mentioned, can you go into any detail on what these missions will be like and how they will work? In my mind and hopes, they will be something along the lines of a said post. But what CIG said is after 318, we want to separate commodity trading from cargo hauling. So commodity trading will be the high risk, high reward. So if you invest a large amount of your money, you will also have to manage the cost of loading and unloading as well as the protection around it. But on the other hand, cargo hauling is just moving things from NPCs from point A to B, and you are not tied to it financially. The first step here is we will be adding a cargo hauling mission that extends the current box delivery missions once you can manually load and unload your own cargo. They will start small and get larger, and the only thing that players are risking is their reputation. I would love to be able to buy one or two SCU boxes to be able to put whatever we want in them. It would make org events easier could buy all the armor for ground battles extra weapons and ammo etc i want you to be able to do that as well rather than having to blow up your ship and create them yourself on top of that i want you to be able to carry those around loot bunkers fill them up and then snap them to the grid in your ship once you are back i also want you to be able to do this and then go back to a station and go and sell all of this without having to transfer it all to that station's local inventory in order to do so which will be absolutely fantastic if it can that said, it probably won't make it to 318. At some point, however, it will be a thing. This is where I use the dreaded soon. Will cargo boxes have any kind of signatures to be picked up by vehicle pings? Cargo containers can be scanned and AR markers will be present if they survive the explosion. Thank God. Otherwise, there's a needle in a haystack. We have also added colored tints to the containers so you can at least identify what category they belong to, such as metals or processed goods. That's quite a nice quality of life thing there are we getting any dynamic pricing changes to the commodities commodity prices will not change for 318 mainly because if we did it now we would have to do it all over again as soon as we add manual loading and unloading to the loop loading and unloading will dramatically change the whole commodity trading loop and an interesting one here at the end is will cargo containers stolen by pirates be recognized by buyers as being stolen if so, then what happens if I willingly transfer my cargo to another player to sell for me? When a player purchases commodities, those are owned by the player that purchases them. Anyone else trying to sell them will have to use a no questions asked terminal and they will not receive full price for anything that they are trying to sell. Even if I give a cargo container to a friend, they would have to sell it at a no questions asked terminal and they would not get full price for the commodity. Grim Hex, for example, would be a location I could fence my stolen goods. As you can see in that last question regarding other people's cargo, piracy will have more of a chance to take a foothold in the verse, and that's exactly where soft deaths come in. So what is soft deaths? Well, currently when losing a firefight, crashing into an asteroid, or merely accidentally pressing the self-destruct to reject button, <laughs> I've never done that. Your ship would blow up and everything in it. 
but not with Soft Death. Soft Death gives you a 70% chance of your ship being disabled and not go boom boom. Well, what does this mean? It means you're floating in a shell of your former ship with your cargo and you are likely to be boarded. So there's a few questions here that need answered by CIG and I'm sure they're probably all over it like a fat kid on a cupcake. But a few good questions would be regarding the disabled ship's movement. Once disabled, is it going to be an all stop or will it continue the way it was going? Tractor beams are not coming yet, so boarding may be difficult at 300 kilometers an hour. I'm assuming here that the ship will obviously cease movement once disabled but if you let me know and the rest of us that are watching this in the comments if you do know more then that would be great will there be a visual or audio cue to let us know that we have disabled a ship otherwise i'm gonna keep shooty shooting until i see fire again that's probably definitely being thought of and i'm sure cig have their own ideas of what they want for this it can't be that difficult but i'm sure they'll figure it out if the enemy ship does blow up however there is a chance that up to 90 percent of the cargo remains intact but that percentage can go to zero cig says on average it's going to be around 45 percent of the cargo that's recoverable i have no luck however so i know i'll be the guy getting the zero percent so your lucky ones can get the 90 percent you can thank me later so yes a rather big change heading to the verse soon i'm actually looking forward to seeing how this works out and if i'm loaded up with cargo and crash there's still a chance that i can fly back and recover some of it which is pretty cool next up we have racing i know it's not everyone's cup of tea and i for one i'm nowhere near a racer in this game but i still want a go of what's coming Believe it or not, there's going to be six new racetracks coming to 318. That is actually a crazy amount of racetracks, and they are dotted all over the verse, from the obvious Snake Pit location, to the asteroids around Grim Hex, to Orison, and even Area 18, which is looking pretty awesome, by the way. Look at this. Along with the new racetracks, there will be some new mission types, bringing variety to the game as well. So, for example, uh, race and time trials, where you would pay to enter, and if you win, you may get some credits and some added reputation. Speaking of reputation, not all tracks may be available on your Mobiglass until you build yours up. It's definitely bringing something new to the verse, whether it's your cup of tea or not. Next up, we got to see some work being taken place in the Stanton system. And that work is another 30 outposts coming. Here's what they said. Because we've had a bit extra time, we've been able to actually bring out these outposts. Um, they weren't initially meant to come out for 318. When 317 came out, we had just initially five derelict outposts on Microtech, but now we're times that by seven. So when 318 rolls out, there should be 35 derelict outposts, 10 on Microtech, 10 on Hurston, and between one to six on various different moons throughout the Stanton system. Well, the players can go through and explore the environment. They can look for loot boxes so they can get a munch or maybe find a multi-tool or just things that they could sell at kiosks. Um, there are also delivery missions as well, similar to ones that you've seen in 317, where the players will go to a derelict outpost, which is occupied by nine tails, uh, take them out, get the delivery box and deliver it to wherever it needs to go. So some of the issues that we've seen so far with the derelict outpost are related to AI. As you might have seen in Citizen Con, um, there have been some updates to the combat AI and it's kind of slowly making its way into the PU. So there's a few little teething issues there just to make sure that the AI are actually working correctly within the daily outpost on the planets and hopefully not walking into walls. Because 318 is have has got a lot of content coming um, with, with say like Pez for instance, um, it has been a bit more of a challenging release just because obviously the new issues that are coming up because of PEZ but I think that the teams are tackling it as quickly as they possibly can. We're thankful that we're getting the extra time to kind of really flesh it out and make sure that it's a quality release for the players. We also saw work on stations in Pyro. These stations of course are going to be lawless so it's going to be an absolute carnage fest there. Um, <laughs> but let's hear what they said about that. 
Currently, I am working on the uh, new rest stop stations that are going to be found in the pyro system once we release that in the upcoming 4.0 patch. Because these stations are lawless and there's going to be no um, like green zones to govern your behavior on the stations, we're going over it just to make sure that the locations are fun for the backers to engage in combat. So we've been covering stuff like sniping spots, uh, combat routes, balance against facing AI, um, you know, um, also identifying issues, potential issues with the environment that might hinder the gameplay experience, such as uh, potential issues with lighting and fog, potential bottlenecks and choke points in the uh, station layout that might cause problems for players and end up getting uh, bottlenecked by another hostile group. We found some issues with some of the environmental puzzles currently. There's a bit of desync. If I was to disable, say, an electronic trap, it would not show up for the other player. So we've been working, like getting some debug and stuff to make sure that the devs are fully aware of what the issue is and they can rectify this before a wider release. There's a dramatic difference between these stations and the ones that are found in the Stanton system. Um, they're very uh, dark and oppressive in nature, um, very run down and they offer a lot more gameplay opportunities for players and also um, a lot more possibilities and overall experience that the current rest stops just uh, are not capable to cater to. It's all looking pretty damn crispy for 3.18, but as I said, we have to wait for that. So what's closer for us that we can look forward to let me uh, let me rattle my brain here that's right it's iae which is the intergalactic aerospace expo which starts on the 19th of november which i believe is this saturday so this will be my first iae so i'm looking forward to it when i'm not at work and seeing what it's all about if you don't know much then it's basically a large in-game event showing off the new ships in the game uh the old ships in the game it's just a big massive ship fest the large majority of these vehicles will be free to fly for the event and if you're on the fence about star citizen in general then it's a great time to jump in and have a look because you can jump in for free fly them all without dropping a penny and then decide if it's the game for you that you want to invest in if you fancy signing up for it then please think about using my referral code that will be uh, up here somewhere and in the description below and it will give you another 5,000 credits for your account so you know it's a win-win and i'd appreciate the thought so regarding iae here is what the timetable looks like so it starts on november 19th uh, day one we have anvil aerospace followed by day two which is rsi Day three is Aegis Dynamics. Day four is all the alieny ones. Day five, we got Crusader and Tumbril. Day six is Origin, Posh Posh. Day seven, you got quite a few here from Argo and Consolidated Outlands and Kruger, etc. Day eight is Drake Interplanetary, which are the hosts of this year's IAE, so that could be a good one. Day nine is Misk. Day ten is Best in Show and Weapons and Armor. And days 11 to 13. So three days worth is the finale. I don't know what the finale entails for three days, but uh, but I'm going to try and jump onto that bad boy when I can. I'll also attempt to put out some videos when I'm not working of me walking around and having a gander, if that interests you guys. And I'll have a gameplay video up this week of me doing some spacey shooty stuff, hopefully. I've got some new new joysticks that i want to give a go if you enjoyed the video then please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you want to see more from me as it really does help the channel out and that's all this week from uh, from the verse so stay safe citizens and i will catch you in the next one